to show you what I did with the welder here. I uh, took two pieces of angle iron and welded them together uh, like that and then I just tack welded them right onto the back of the chassis here and then just have the wire going up inside and it just comes in like that. See? I'm going to make sure that you've got a insulator in between here so that way the arc doesn't happen in between here. I'm going to make sure that your wire is insulated because what will happen is that since the electricity comes from the roller you want to make sure that you have an insulator there because if not then it just create an arc right there and there goes my wire. It melts it right, right at that point. So I think what I'm going to do today is I think I'm going to work on the chain tensioner. I was kind of hoping that I wouldn't have to use one of these things. It looks like I'm going to have to. Let me show you why. See how it's 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 still it's not as it's a little loose now. It's not it's not tight enough. And when I go to sit on it, because the way the pivot is set up, it's even more loose. So it hits the hits the steel right here. So I'm trying to figure out whether I want to use a I want to use a chain tensioner. I'll tighten the chain up, but you see how the chain chain's going to be colliding with this. So I'm wondering about putting some type of rail right here that the chain will go into because I really don't want the chain tensioner pushing down don't want that because I might have to do it that way get off see you want to put the chain tensioner on the side of the chain that's not going to have the force the top part of the chain is going to have the force which is going to be propelling me forward so I'm going to need to put the chain tensioner down here. So I'm thinking what I'll probably do, probably make it so that way it's pushing down. I don't like that because that means I'll have to be real careful about going up over bumps and stuff so that way stuff doesn't collide against this thing. But this really isn't much of an off-road vehicle anyways. Well, a serious off-road. You can go around in the yard and stuff like that with it, but not, you know, any Baja and crap. So, the chain tensioner that I'm going to use or the thing that I'm going to use as a chain tensioner is this old lazy boy chair. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this piece right here as the chain tensioner. I'm going to use this roller. I'm going to cut off, cut the little pin out and use these two pieces. Set it up that way. I don't know if I need to... Ooh. I'm going to be grinding out that pin right there. So I'm going to knock that out. Now I'll probably have to cut these, pe cut the pieces off, cut the pieces even. Now, I know in one of my videos, especially one of my how-to videos, I told people, told you guys. One thing that I think is really neat is when people use parts off of other things to build their go-karts. I kind of think that's kind of neat how people do that. The reason I think it's neat is because when I have to do it, I hate it. So, you know, I kind of look up to people who've got the tolerance to deal with that crap. But me, on the other hand, I just don't like it. Because it... Stuff just don't work out the way I want it to. Right. That's what I was after. Okay, well I just took that thing off and um, it looks like I'll have to put it in like this. But the thing is, is that it is, this is hard plastic. And that'll make some racket while the chain's rubbing against it, rotating and stuff. So what I think I'm going to do on this is I'm going to grind out this pin, take that out, and use these these are little 
rubber insert grommet type of things that go into a shock absorber. So they're rubber. Rubber won't make all that racket. So what I'll probably do is put that in there with a bolt going through it. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to probably put in some washers or something uh, to make sure it stays centered. It's not riding back and forth on the on the bolt because that'll make the chain do this crap and don't want that. So I'll do that here quick. Okay, so this is what I've got so far. I've got some of these spacers in here uh, that uh, Big Head Audi sent me in one of his box of goodies that he sent off to me as donation. So what I'm going to do is, it looks like what I'm, the you know, best way to do this is uh, I'm going to be cutting off this part right here, rounding it off as close as I possibly can to match this one. But these two bars are different sizes, which is which I'm going to try to use to my advantage by taking the wider side and putting it to the outside, this, and I'll be taking this spring and I'll be putting it on there like that getting it to hook around the steel like this and then when I go to put in my other piece it's going to have to be welded up underneath here I'm going to have to put that piece in and then have a little maybe a piece of angle iron coming out to grab this part here to be pushing down constantly on on the chain so I'll have constant tension on the chain this little rubber rubber uh, grommet right here. I don't like the idea of all these bolts sticking out in the middle of nowhere, but I can just turn those things around and maybe spray paint them. Just don't quite know where I want to place this at. I can only go back so far before I, I'm going to get into trouble with the tire. So I think I'll probably put it back this way a little farther. Yeah, I have to do that. Okay, everybody, uh, so this is what I've done so far. Stuck this uh, rubber grommet on here, and I cut off that longer piece, rounded it off, and then I have uh, some little washers, a bolt, and I have a little piece of uh, spacer that I cut off of this tube, and then I built this up and I offset the hole and I'll show you how, I, how, how this goes together and I put this bar on here, this little chunk, and this is all scrap as it is put this little piece on here, welded that up and then built up uh, the area for this part that's going to go there, I had to build that up a little bit and all I did was just took my welder and just zap 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 kept putting blobs of, of weld on there and this is how it goes together. So, okay. put a washer, put a little spacer in there, take my spring. There. Take another washer. Put the washer there. Put the nut on right. Decently tight enough. And there we go. Then what I'll do is I'll take that and I'll be welding that onto the frame. And then that will give me a constant tension on on the chain and it's welded so it'll be able to flex and the chain is underneath it so let's go try this out <laughs> we have to put a little bit of oil or a little bit of a grease in there 
Put some grease in here to make sure it's not jerky. All right, let's go try it. I'm gonna have to weld this on onto the uh, cart. Okay, I just welded this on. Oh, comes the moment of truth. Well, I just got done pushing it around, and it looks like I'm going to have to get some lock nuts right here. And it rides a little off the bushing here. This bushing is tapered, so I wonder if I take the bushing out and reverse it. Because you see it goes up at an angle, and when I welded this thing on, play around with this a little bit more. If I ever collide with a rock or something like that, it's a little too big. I mm. Once I squirt some grease in there and stuff like that, it'll be all nice and good. Yeah. Got that kind of accomplished, so. Okay, so there we go. Got that done. Well, kind of. Goes to show you that you can use uh, even furniture to help build a go-kart. Tell me what you guys think of this. Of this, this idea. I think it's a pretty neat idea. It looks like it's gonna work pretty good. So, all right. Rate this video, thumbs up this video, and, and post a comment. Looks like this, this is gonna work pretty decent. Tell me what you guys think of this. So, it's kind of funny that I used a, a recliner. <laughs> well, take it easy, everybody and I'll talk to you later.